All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at the FTM 500, specifically at the handheld microphone. On the handheld microphone, you can see here at the bottom, there's some function buttons, P1 through P4. These come with some factory default settings, and we'll take a look at those. And then we're going to take a look at the different settings that you can apply, and we'll talk about what those settings do and show you how to reprogram these buttons to meet your needs. The first thing I wanted to do is take a look at this image from the user manual and you can see a close up of the actual handheld microphone. And when you take a look at it, you can see the number eight at the bottom are those four buttons. You also have your microphone, you have a flashing light to indicate mode and when you're transmitting you have a mute button, up and down keys at the top, that's numbers four and five, and then you have your numeric keypad which is number seven. Let's go ahead and take a look at how you set these up inside the radio configuration. So here's the interface to our FTM500. And if I push this function knob, that gives me my quick or frequently accessed menu. If I do a long press, then I get the entire menu, all 127 options. Uh, and what I can do is I can rotate down and I believe it's setting 27. No, oh, maybe it's not there. It is 29 mic program key. If I push this, then I can see each one of the four buttons, P1 through P4. Out of the box, the first one is your second PTT. And what that does is it transmits on the lower frequency. We'll take a look at that in a second. P2 is my home channel, P3 is DX, and P4 is WX. Let's take a look at what some of these do, and then we'll go ahead and look at the interface. Okay, this is also from the manual, and this is a description of the different functions that you can program with the uh, programmable buttons. So the first one is off, the second one is uh, second PTT, and this is transmit on the subband frequency at the bottom of the screen. The other one that we wanted to took at, take a look at, I believe, was DX, or the home channel, I'm sorry. Home channel recalls your home channel. Now you can set up your home channel when you're programming your radio, and that's the channel that you're most likely going to use when operating your radio. The next one down is DX, and so this says, press to select the communication mode, press and hold to activate the wires X feature. So quick press is your communication mode, and then a long press is your wires X feature. And then the last one is WX, and that switches operation to the weather, weather channel bank. We'll take a look at that in just one second. I did want to quickly cover the communication modes that are available when you use the DX function. And so uh, you have V slash D mode, which is voice or data mode. And this means that they're transmitted simultaneously. You have voice FR mode, which is full rate mode. And this is where it uses the full 12.5 kilohertz enables high quality communication and that is for digital modes. Then you have your FM mode and this is for when you want to use frequency modulation. And then it has an AM mode which is receive only on this uh, radio in uh, things like the air band. And you can see that it says AM for receive only. Let's go back to the radio. All right, so what I want to do is get out of here and what I can do is hit this back button and that takes me to my home screen. Now I'm going to press the various buttons. This is P1, and you can see, and we're transmitting into a dummy load, so we're safe. And then you can see down here, the bottom uh, subband is activating when I do that. If I press number two, that takes me to my home channel. My home channel is programmed for 146520. So I can toggle back and forth between my previous channel and my home channel. P3 changes the communication mode, and you can see that up here. And let's go back to FM. And then if I press P4, it takes me to my weather channels. At this point, I can use my knob or my VFO to switch between the various weather channel pre-programmed frequencies, or I can use the buttons at the top of the microphone to switch between them as well. And then a press of the F4 but, or P4 button takes me back to my main communication, my main standard configuration. So what I want to do is I want to go in here and I want to do a long press and that takes me back to the menu. Press this again and here are my four keys. If I press this menu one more time, I can turn the functions off, but I wouldn't encourage you to do that. And then we can go through some of these functions. We covered second PTT. 
GM is your group mode. And then you would use this if you're using uh, the group mode feature, which is part of your digital ID. And what that does is that other radios within a close proximity transmission radius, you can add a code, a digital ID. And that means that other radios on that digital ID can communicate with each other. And it's a pretty handy feature. Maybe we'll do a video on that later on. I can go down, oh, go in the wrong direction. Recording and stopping is if I want to record my voice or QSO. Scan enables the scanning feature or function. Home channel we covered. Repeater shift. Let's uh, go ahead and select this one. And then I want to exit. So now when I press P1, it's going to change my repeater shift if I am either on a programmed repeater or within, actually I think a long press of this will There we go. And then you can see that I have a positive repeater shift here. <clears throat> so if I key up, you see that it adds 600 kilohertz or kilocycles if you're old school to my frequency. Now, if I press the P1 button, it turns the repeater shift off. If I press it again, then we get the negative. And so that is one way that you can manipulate that. Let's go back to our menu. Okay, here we are back at repeater shift. Let's keep going down. Reverse is, you may know this as talk around. And so this is when you would talk on the repeater's output. And uh, a lot of people don't like that, so I would recommend that you don't use it. Uh, here is text power or transmission power or TX power. And this is one that I like a lot. So let's go ahead and set that and get out of there. And now by using whichever key I program, in this case P1, I can cycle through my power settings, which is super duper handy. <clears throat> Continuing to go through, I can turn my squelch off, uh, which can be a handy feature if you're in a noisy environment. Now, T-Call emits a tone, I believe it's 1750 uh, hertz. And this is something that is used to open up a repeater squelch that uses that particular tone. I haven't read too much on it, so I don't know if you can change that tone, but I believe it's pretty popular configuration setting in Europe. So much so that one of the default uh, programmable buttons actually comes with T-Call when you're in Europe. Let's see, DX we covered and weather we covered. All right, so let's keep going from weather. So this would be stations that are with programmed within um, uh, your APRS settings. This would be your list of messages in APRS. This would be replies. And this would be if you want to edit any of your APRS messages. And finally, we have DW. And let's just go ahead and select that one. And what this does is it changes the way that your two, your two bands, your top band and your sub band inter interact together. Let me pull up the chart real quick and we should be able to see it says operating operation setting of the dual receive function and let's go back to here and we've set that so let me go and escape and if i push that you can see that it turns my priority scan alert on this will change depending upon which operating mode you're in Anyway, I hope that was helpful. I know that there was a lot of questions around these programmable buttons and how they work. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.